let me say let me say good night to all of you let me greet my colleagues who are here and all of you here this evening and to all of you watching live on mapping and on the internet and listening live on Kyrie FM ladies and gentlemen I am delighted to be speaking in this sport this evening Earlier today, when advertising for this meeting began in earnest, a vendor, who I am sure is in the crowd tonight, called me saying, PM, thanks for coming to Lagon tonight. I said, why? What's so special about my being in Lagon tonight? She said to me, well, last night, the other side had a meeting here and my boyfriend and I went out and stuck up the vehicle, but nothing much didn't sell. Because, because they, didn't, they didn't have anybody at the meeting. But I know Labour is going to have a good crowd tonight. So, my dear vendor, my dear vendor friend, I present you this massive crowd in Lago tonight. And please remember, this is only after a few hours of advertising this meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not normally swayed by crowds. But I must tell you, I have been amazed by the number of persons who have been turning out night after night to listen to the platform of the Dominica Labour Party. I was in Monjon last night, and when Ivo Stevenson invite me, invited me there, I thought I would be, I thought I would be speaking to a few dozen people as the meeting was not advertised outside of the Grand Four constituency. But amazingly, when I got to Monjon last evening, there were hundreds of enthusiastic supporters and well-wishers, many of whom did not even know I was scheduled to speak at the meeting. Even though I am not normally swayed by crowds, I must tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that it feels good to be speaking to hundreds and thousands each night, rather than some people in blue, whom I sense from a TV, speak only to a couple dozens, if that many. But I am happy to be in Lago tonight in support of our candidate, Mr. Alvin Bernard. I am not supporting Alvin Bernard tonight simply because he is our candidate in this constituency. I recruited Alvin Bernard six years ago and invited him to contest the Rosa Central seat on the ticket of the Dominica Labour Party. Alo contested the seat and lost. But notwithstanding this, I placed him in my cabinet of ministers because I recognized and valued the metal and worth of the man. He remained a full minister for the entire term. And I am tonight saying to the people of Rosa Central, I need Alvin Bernard back in my cabinet. But this time, but this time as the duly elected member of the Rosa Central constituency. Much of our government's plans for the continued infrastructural development of Dominica revolves around Roso and its environs. And I want to have a pal rep who will work with me and be fully cooperative in the implementation of our vision for the capital city of Roso. Voters of Dominica, the reality in this elections campaign is that labor is winning and labor is winning big.
have out campaign and outshone the UWP in every department of this campaign. We have set forth to the people of Dominica a clear and coherent plan for taking this country forward. In each of our articulated plans for Dominica, we have said how we will raise the money to implement those programs. We have made clear what our external relations posture shall be. With the Dominican Labour Party, voters in Rosa Central and in Dominica as a whole know what they are getting. With the other side, life after December 8th could be likened to what to that of a lucky dip. You have no clue what you will get once your hands is in the box. So tonight in Alvin Bernard, I am offering you hope. I am offering you stability. I am offering you a presence in the cabinet of ministers. And I'm offering you an enhanced Roso and its environs to live and do business. With Alo, you have a sure winner. With the other side and its candidate, you have a lucky deep in the making. Lennox Linton was here last evening. Did you hear him say anything about his plans for his, for his Roso Central candidate after December 8th? The gentleman running this seat for the UWP does not feature in its hierarchy. He does not sit around any decision-making table. He's simply a number now, and he would simply be a number come December 9th. Would the United Workers Party to win these elections? So for me, the choice for Rosa Central this evening is crystal clear. Vote for Alvin Bernard and enhance your voice and presence in the cabinet of ministers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to Cochrane from here to speak. It's last lap, and tonight we have two national meetings. Tomorrow night, we have one in Rivier Sirik, and on Thursday night, we have two meetings again, one in Pitit Sufre, and the other in Bataka in the Salibia constituency. So tonight will be another long night for me, and of course, my very tired throat. But I want before leaving, I want before leaving to discuss with you a few matters of concern. Firstly, back in June, and I repeat, back in the month of June, when we devised and planned this campaign, we determined that the focal themes would be labor, katwavai, and also leadership is everything. Those themes were not arrived at accidentally or plucked out the sky. We surveyed the political landscape of Dominica, and we determined that irrespective of what specific sectoral policies were devised, the future of Dominica, especially during the course of its current global economic recession, depended strongly on the character and caliber of leadership that emerges from these elections. Everything that is promised in both party manifestos is dependent on the caliber and the character of leadership that is elected next Monday evening. After 11 years at the helm of this government and country, I am not minded this evening to focus on the issue of my leadership or that of the government over which I had the honor to lead. I believe that our phenomenal record of achievements speak for itself. But tonight, I want to invite you to examine closely what happened in this country just yesterday. Leadership, I remind you, my dear brothers and sisters, is everything. Lennox Linton was told by someone, and that in itself is a reflection of his judgment. But he was told by someone that Labour had a plane load of persons arriving at Douglas Charles Airport tomorrow evening at 3 p.m. First, let me make this, let me take this opportunity to state categorically that the Dominican Labour Party is not aware and is certainly not associated 
with any plane of Dominicans or individuals arriving at the Douglas Shells Airport tomorrow at 3 p.m., Thursday at 3 p.m., or any evening at 3 p.m., or any other time. So I do not know where Lennox Linton got his information from, but great journalist that he is, he heard a rumor and he ran with it, not once stopping to check his facts. Had he not canceled, listen to me very carefully, had he not canceled his planned storming of the airport tomorrow evening, he would have gone up there in vain because there was and there is no plane arriving from the U.S. tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday, chartered by the Dominica Labour Party. But that is not the point, ladies and gentlemen. The issue here is leadership or lack thereof. Here is a man who wants to be Prime Minister of Dominica come next Tuesday morning. He hears that there is a group of Dominicans, not Iranians, Haitians, Russians, or even Americans, but a group of Dominicans arriving in Dominica. And he incites his supporters to go to the airport and create mayhem. He invites them to go to the airport and compromise the safety of landing of aircrafts at the Douglas Charles Airport. To go to the airport, ladies and gentlemen, and risk the lives and limbs of would-be Dominicans returning home. I canvass the villages of Dominica, and I am yet to meet a family that is 100% labor, or a family that is 100% UWP. So when you send your thugs to the airport to risk the lives of other Dominicans returning home, there is every possibility that among those targeted would be the families of his own supporters in the United Workers Party. In other words, in other words, the man is so blindly power hungry that he would risk the lives and well-being of the families of the said people he was urging to go to the airport and create havoc. No, he did not say he was going to lead a delegation of six or twelve persons to the airport. He invited the entire family of the United Workers Party to storm the airport to go push over the security and to prevent the plane purportedly carrying fellow Dominicans from landing. I even heard that they said they would have thrown diesel across the tarmac. Do you understand now what I mean when I say that Lennox Linton is a danger to this society? Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I am convinced, I am convinced that the man who woke up yesterday morning with a clear desire to cause injury, if not death, to would-be Dominicans. How can you, as a wannabe Prime Minister of Dominica, incite thousands of supporters to go storm the airport? Do you know what damage that would have done to Dominica's reputation, ladies and gentlemen? Do you know what that would have done to our ability to remain acknowledged or acceptable to international aviation authorities and regulators? Do you know the threat to national security that that created? Dominica would have been blacklisted as a result, as an accept, unacceptable, sorry, international aviation destination. That action by Lennox Linton would have crippled the economy of Dominica. I take this opportunity tonight to salute the chief of police for the swift...
I take this opportunity tonight to salute the Chief of Police for the swift and forceful stand he took in making it clear that such lawless and irresponsible behavior would not have been tolerated in Dominica. I salute those police officers who made clear their intention to defend the honor of this country, our beautiful Dominica. Lennox Linton is, in fact, a boy in search of a toy. This young man called Lennox Linton is a danger to our society. I have said it, I have said it once, and I will say it repeatedly. Dominica would not survive 15 months of Lennox Linton. Ladies and gentlemen, as prime minister, as a prime minister, you have to be cool, collective, and calm at all times. You have to be measured in your utterances and your actions. You have to manage your capacity to influence and sway public opinion. Dominicans, I am warning you this evening, you cannot have a trigger-happy person seated in the Prime Minister's chair. This man was prepared yesterday to put the lives of hundreds of Dominicans at risk and to put the economic well-being of this country in jeopardy just to prove a point to himself and his European funders. Now, even if he did not storm the security systems at the airport, the very thought of carrying thousands of supporters to the airport to intimidate persons arriving is thoughtless and very irresponsible. How would you have known who was a Dominican or who was not? Not all visitors to Dominica are white or Caucasian. There are black people like you and I who visit Dominica on a daily basis. Would black Americans, Europeans, and Caribbean citizens have been the subject of Lennox Linton's aggressive and intimidating behavior? The United States ambassador to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean is a black man. He looks like me or you. Could it be that had he been arriving Dominica tomorrow afternoon, that he would be, have been accosted and possibly assaulted by the thugs that Lennox Linton were inciting to violence. Could the guns that Brian Linton spoke about have been used on innocent visitors to Dominica? Ladies and gentlemen, there could have been a bloodbath at the Douglas Charles Airport tomorrow evening, all because of the reckless and irresponsible leadership of Lennox Linton. And this is the man who says he wants to be the Prime Minister of Dominica come Tuesday morning. Ladies and gentlemen, these are very serious issues. And I want voters in this country to understand this evening what it is we are battling against. Not only is this boy uneducated and not trained in anything constructive or productive, but he is swift to anger and prone to violence. He would not survive 15 months as Prime Minister. I am warning the people of Dominica. Some of you feel aggrieved that you did not, do, did not get this and you did not get that in the period that Labour has been in office. You feel that you have supported this party faithfully and Labour has not reciprocated the kindness in a manner that you would like. I empathize with many who share that view. I have spoken harshly to several of my pal reps, whom I did not believe were as close to the people as I would have liked. And I have put systems in place. I have put systems in place to remedy that situation in the next five years. With six new faces as candidates, 
You can see where I even changed some pal reps in an attempt to get a better deal for you, the voters of Dominica. But you do not cure the cut on your finger by cutting off the arm. You do not scold your pal rep by kicking out the government. You do not cause a government led by Lennox Clinton to be elected simply because you are vexed with a pal rep or even with the prime minister. This election on Monday is over and above the consideration of the action or attitude of a pal rep. You have a right to be upset with a pal rep whom you feel did not give you or your community a fair deal. But that is no reason for you to cause Lennox Linton to emerge as Prime Minister of Dominica. Anyone, anyone who does not vote on Monday is enhancing the chances of Lennox Linton becoming Prime Minister of Dominica on Tuesday. I want, I want to repeat, any registered voter who does not vote on Monday is essentially supporting the idea of Lennox Linton being sworn in, in as Prime Minister of Dominica on Tuesday. I ask you tonight, is that what you want for Dominica? Can you, can you live with yourself if your Labour Power Rep loses by one vote and that causes a change of government in Dominica? What would you say three months from now when hardships set in that you're sorry? Three months from now when public officers cannot be paid, will you say you are sorry? Three months from now when the National Employment Program is curtailed and hundreds of young people sent home unceremoniously, what will those of you who did not vote say? Will you say you are sorry? Three months from now, if and when the UW were to win this election and China suspends relations with Dominica on the basis of Lennox Linton not embracing the one China policy. What will those who did not vote say? That you are sorry? When Dominica loses the chance at an international airport and a new $200 million state-of-the-art hospital and hundreds of scholarships for young Dominicans are lost, what will those of you who did not vote say? That you are sorry? When this economy grinds to a halt, Without a dollar in new investments, and Henley and Partners does not deliver the gold, frankincense, and myrrh they promised the UWP, what will those of you who did not vote say? That you are sorry? Sorry, my dear friends, will not bring back progress and prosperity to this country. Sorry will not return the social safety net this Labour government has caused to be erected around the poor and the most vulnerable in our society. Sorry will not bring back the housing revolution or the education revolution. Sorry will be no use to anybody as this country will be saddled with an incompetent, discredited government for five long years. Five years of economic stagnation and ruin would set us back at least 30 years. I am saying tonight, I am not confident Dominica could recover from such a deliberating, deliberating experience with UDLP in government. So the choice this election, ladies and gentlemen, is crystal clear. Lennox Clinton has demonstrated repeatedly that he is not fit for the position of Prime Minister. He has messed up at every turn in this election. He has said nothing right and he has done nothing right. The boy is overwhelmed with himself. He is reckless 
and thoughtless. His recklessness and thoughtless and thoughtlessness is mind-boggling. It sends chills to my spine. I genuinely fear for the future of Dominica. What is country? To be placed in the hands of Lennox Linton, a man who is not qualified or prepared for leadership at any level, far more as Prime Minister. So voters of Rosa Central, you have a duty on Monday to put one of the 21 seats out of the reach of Lennox Linton. You cannot vote in all 21 constituencies, but you have influence and control over this one, the Rosa Central constituency. I want you to go out on Monday and vote for Alvin Bernard and the Dominica Labour Party. Keep Dominica, keep Dominica in safe hands, ladies and gentlemen. Keep Dominica moving. Vote for Alvin Bernard and the Dominica Labour Party on Monday. And let's keep Dominica on the right track and moving in the right direction. Ladies and gentlemen, election day, Monday the 8th of December, is an important election in the history of Dominica. We have to vote for progress and advancement. We have to vote for the well-being of this country. And the only party that has the plans and programs and resources to move Dominica forward is the Dominica Labour Party. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for listening to me. I have to leave you now to go to Cochrane to speak at our other national meeting in Cochrane. May God bless you as you continue to listen to this important meeting in Rosa Central. May God bless your families. May God bless our beautiful Dominica as you move on, onward to victory on December 8th. There is no doubt, ladies and gentlemen, that the Dominica Labour Party and the people of Dominica shall be victorious on December 8th. Thank you. God bless you.